How do I adjust my bobbin winder stopper? Hmm. Well, typically you won't need a screwdriver and we'll find out exactly why in this video. So you wanna get your bobbin wound perfectly. So sometimes you wind it and there's not enough thread on the bobbin. And then other times you wind it and there's way too much thread on the bobbin. So how do I adjust that? Well, there's a bobbin winder stopper. And the bobbin winder stopper is the piece right here that will, when your bobbin winds, it will, the thread will push against this and then push the bobbin over and then it will click and stop winding the bobbin. So this bobbin winder stopper has a setting that you can set for it. Um, and what some people have done is they see a screw there, so they take their screwdriver and they loosen that. Well, don't do that. These are made so that they have indents and you can move them a click at a time. The problem with putting a screwdriver on this screw is that underneath there's a nut and the nut will fall off if you loosen this too much, which has happened for this customer. And the nut is somewhere in the machine. And then we have, you, you can look at the bottom and see how this works. There are four little tabs on here and then they go into these little guys right here. And that gives you, you can feel the clicks as it moves. So if you want it to make smaller bobbins, you move it towards this direction so that the larger lobe is on here and it will push that bobbin away earlier as it winds. Or if you want more thread on your bobbin, you turn it the other way and then the thread has to be much further over in order to push this off. So you can adjust that one click at a time and get you the perfect size bobbin for your machine. So today we are going to do a cleaning on this machine and then we're going to repair this by putting uh, the nut back on the bottom of this, tightening it up and making sure it's good to go for use. One thing I've already noticed is our tension is set at six where five is the middle. So there may be a little bit of issue with some dirt and things in between tension discs um, or down here with our bobbin tension could be a little bit off and could also have something down here. So. We're gonna do a quick cleaning on this machine and focus on fixing that right there. So now when you get inside your machine, what you end up seeing, what you end up seeing is here's that little riser. Here's where this lobe piece goes. And then underneath is where the nut goes. See how easy that is to fix? So you just have to have the whole machine apart in order to do it. So that's the pain part. Now you don't want it too loose. Now you don't want it too tight because you want to be able to move it, but you want it to be able to stay where you put it. So now we, we can move it, it'll stay where we put it, and that's a perfect tightness right there. If you got it to the perfect spot, you can always tighten this down and you can always loosen it just a tiny bit because this will hold the nut in place. The problem is if you try to remove the screw, the nut's gonna fall down inside the machine and then you're stuck. 
and you gotta take the whole machine apart. Don't forget that in my Etsy store, you can get the pry tool that I use to open this machine. It comes in a pack of four different tools. You get all four of these tools for one low price. Uh, you can check out my Etsy store. There will be a link below. Since I've got you here, I'm gonna show you one other thing that I like about these machines and we see problems with from time to time. Uh, when the machine has a telescoping spool pin, a lot of times these become issues over time because this plastic here degrades because it gets used quite a bit. Or, you know, the spring down in here goes bad or falls out or breaks. Uh, all it is is a little spring that's like one piece of metal going across there as a spring. So it's got spring tension on it. When I lift up on that, you can see the, the spring tension. <clears throat> and that just holds in place because you have these detents. So you have a detent here and a detent at the bottom. And that's what does it. If you pull too hard, you could pull this past that spring and it comes right out. And now you're in trouble because the spring has covered up your hole and you can't get it back in. So that's another time where you're gonna have to open up your machine in order to pull the spring a little bit and put that back in. So don't you don't have to pull hard on these. You just pull it till it clicks and you're good. Look what we found. So we open up this machine and we've got some fuzz. Let's bust some fuzz with the fuzz buster. One thing you got to watch for on these machines is if thread ever gets taken up by the above the needle and gets stuck in there, you're going to have a, a bunch of thread to unravel. So what we have here is a piece of thread. So we're going to go backwards and unravel this thread. It's wrapped around and there we go. Now, since this machine's really easy to see, and we've got it right here, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our timing. And some of our needle position. So I'm bringing you in on my cell phone. So if you look as we're going, the needle comes down, hits the bottom, 
Well, it doesn't hit, but, you know, it stops its downward movement, starts moving up, and then as it's moving up, that hook goes right above the eye of the needle. So that is very close. This is on the right-hand side of our zigzag. That is very close to the eye of that needle, so I almost want to lower that needle bar. And then on the left side, you'll notice that it's a little bit higher. And that's how this works. So I, I will not touch that needle bar until we do some sewing to make sure that we're catching the thread on both sides there. But as far as the timing goes, I'm happy with that timing. While we're at it, we're going to put our hook assembly together. With a couple drops of oil on the race. The race is just the part where the metal of the hook rides and it slides on the race. So you have metal touching metal, so you need a couple drops of oil there. So now that we've got the hook is in there good and tight, we're checking our needle to hook clearance and I can do that on my straight stitch. So you see how the hook point follows behind that needle and there's it's like a half a millimeter right now. It's very close, but you want it even closer than that. You want it almost to where it touches and then you back off just barely. So we have a screw right here and this screw will move this whole assembly one way or the other. So we want the assembly to move this way so that that needle comes swings out. Um, actually, I want the needle to swing the other way, right? I want the needle to swing this way, so I want this to come out so that the needle will swing that way. So let's do that, and I've only got so many hands, so I'm going to put my phone down. All right, I just moved that screw about a quarter of a turn. Let's see what we've got. We're still not there. Let's see if I can hold you there while I move it. See it moving closer? That was another quarter turn. There was another quarter turn. So now let's take a look at this. Now we're at the point where we are barely touching it. So now I want to come off just slightly. Should be good. So if you look at the needle here, you can see it's a little bit towards the back, but that's okay. Trying to get you in line with that. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. And also, while we're here, you can notice that the feed dogs are moving the fabric while the needle's out of the fabric. Now, needle's coming down, those feed dogs came down. Now feed dogs are resetting while the needle's in the fabric, and now the needle comes out of the fabric, feed dogs come up and move the fabric. So our timing is good for our feed as well. Okay, uh, here we go. We're going to put our fabric in. We're all ready to try and sew and see how we're doing. So we're gonna start with a straight stitch and make sure we do a good back tack and then we'll go on from there. Already, I really like this machine, it's very smooth. This is the Brother XL5500. And if you didn't notice, it has a metal frame on the inside, so it's a pretty sturdy machine. Okay, we're going to tighten that bobbin a little bit. Oh, 
Ha ha ha. I meant I was going to loosen the bobbin a little bit, but then I looked up here and I saw that we were on four instead of five, so we're going to not touch that bobbin just yet. It's already looking better. Yeah, that's looking more even. So now we're gonna do the stitch that's the most difficult for most machines. You go to your zigzag, you're gonna go down to about slightly less than a one stitch length. And then we're gonna go to the maximum stitch width. Give that a try. That'll tell us if our timing's good, needle bar height's good, and we can see how exactly how the tensions are measuring up. All right, we did not skip a single stitch, so that tells me that needle bar height and timing is perfect. We do have a couple of stitches where we've pulled the bobbin thread through and we're in the medium here, we're on a five. So I want to tighten up the bobbin thread just a, just a smidge. A smidge enough. Did a little back tack just to make sure that the machine will do it. There we go, we got all top thread on here and then bobbin, bottom thread on here pulled over a little bit. So we're about 80% bobbin thread, that's good. The last thing we're gonna do, so once over I just realized I didn't get the little hole right here clean. So we'll do a last minute cleaning and then I'm gonna use uh, something that it's kind of a new thing that I've been doing for these machines and that's using 303. So I found this on a, another YouTuber who does computer restorations and he uses this to rejuvenate, to rejuvenate the plastic. And uh, for these older machines, this one's already starting to yellow just a tad bit. So we'll put some of this on here, it's UV protectant and this will actually keep, help the plastic keep its color longer and keep it from getting really brittle. Once I did it to one machine, I determined that I'm going to do that to every machine because it really looks good. And then the last thing we gotta check on this machine before we do all that is I wanna make sure that my bobbin winder is actually working. Okay, we're gonna try that right there. go. That looks to me like a full bobbin, so I'm going to keep that adjustment right there. This stuff only takes a minute or so to put on. It's not a big deal. It's pretty easy to do. You've already got the machine clean, and this also helps you clean up maybe a last little bit that you might have missed. You can use this stuff to clean as well because it wipes it right off. And there we have it. Brother XL 5500. We fixed our problem up here with our bobbin winder stopper. Found that um, nut, put it back on, and now it's able to be adjusted. We tested it, it's good. And the rest of the machine has been cleaned. We did a little bit of an adjustment on our uh, needle to hook clearance. Other than that, this machine's working great. Thanks for watching.